Hey, everybody out there in GCP Ground School. I'm super happy and excited to be here and introduce um, one of my customers and strong partners here at SADA, SillaDB, uh, who's in an open source uh, distributed NoSQL database. They're you know, designed to be compatible with Apache, Cassandra, helping you achieve a uh, really significant higher throughputs, lower latencies. And I'm really excited here to introduce uh, my friend, Peter Corliss, who's their director of technical advocacy. He's gonna walk you guys through uh, the benefits, the ins and the outs, really. It's still in really this monster role and fast scale bit database, as you can see here. So uh, I'll, I won't take away any more thunder, but Peter, I pass it on over to you, my friend. Thank you so very much for the, uh, for the introduction. Also, um, I'm very glad to be here at the Ground School. Uh, it's great to be partnering with SADA uh, and with Google Cloud. So uh, let's get into it. So SillyDB is the monstrously fast and scalable uh, database, uh, perfect for your data intensive applications. Uh, we're, we just have uh, a bunch of things we're gonna be running through, so let's get right in, into it. Um, as he said, I am the Director of Technical Advocacy. Uh, my partner in crime here today will be Ruth Chebri, who is our um, uh, developer advocate. So we're gonna go into both the business side and the technical side of what makes SillyDB different. So SillyDB is both the company as well as the name of the product. As a company, we have offices in the United States, in Israel and Poland, with developers spread all around the world. Um, we are a member of the SADA SaaS Alliance, and uh, we have uh, SillyDB for Google Cloud on the Google Cloud Marketplace. That'll be up there by the end of May 2022. So what is our product, SillyDB? It is the monstrously fast and scalable database for data-intensive applications that require high performance and low latency. We were built from the ground up to work on modern multi-core, multi-processor servers, and Roof will take you more into the architecture in a bit. But just know that uh, any use cases where someone would be considering a database like Apache Cassandra or even Amazon DynamoDB can be handled by SillaDB. We're API compatible and will perform far faster at far lower cost. We have both a fully managed database as a service, SillaDB Cloud, and we also have a self-managed version, SillaDB Enterprise. Some of you may have heard about SillyDB already, even if an organization hasn't uh, yet adopted our database. Uh, over six years of innovation, a lot of people have said, hey, those guys at SillyDB know what they're doing. Um, our founders, Dor Leor and Avi Kaviti, were the inventors of the KVM hypervisor. They understood the Linux operating system at a very low level, and they saw how cloud-based servers were changing. They weren't cheap commodity hardware anymore. They were becoming massive multiprocessor systems with NUMA architecture and very fast NVMe SSDs. They were, they were becoming so complex that in a way, a single high scale server could be considered its own internal network cluster. And so they had a vision that in order to take advantage of these new servers, you had to rewrite software from the ground up to avoid internal bottlenecks and to make uh, as many shared nothing async activities as possible. That's how SillyDB 1.0 was launched six years ago. It was originally patterned after Apache Cassandra using the same CQL interface, the same SS table formats, and so on. And for the first few, few years, it was a game of achieving feature parity while coming out of the gate with far superior performance and ease of use. Then in 2020, we launched what we called Project Alternator. It was the first open source database compatible with the Amazon DynamoDB API. Now you have the freedom of deployment to run your DynamoDB workloads anywhere you wanted, on-premises or on another cloud provider such as Google Cloud. At the same time, we were working to be able to go beyond Cassandra, improving on its basic designs. We may materialize views that worked and were not fragile. We implemented lightweight transactions that weren't actually heavyweight because we used less round trips. Plus, we made change data capture far easier to set up and to consume as standard CQL tables. In 2021, we had SillyDB Cloud deployed on Google Cloud, and many of our existing enterprise customers on Google Cloud were pleased to be able to turn over the keys to the store to us so they could focus on building their applications, not performing upgrades or backups. And this year, in 2022, we're about to change the game once again by providing an infrastructure for future innovation. You're going to see things like allowing schema changes using the RAP consensus protocol. And beyond that, you'll see us implement tablets for more discrete data distribution, more elastic provisioning capabilities, and many other innovations. So yes, we're similar to Apache Cassandra and DynamoDB. We can operate like a wide column database, the same as Cassandra, or as a key value database, the same as DynamoDB. 
we can speak both the Cassandra CQL and DynamoDB interface APIs. And we support streaming in similar ways using change data capture or DynamoDB streams. We're also different from these other databases. We'll get better infrastructure utility taking advantage of high density servers like the N2 HiMem family. You're gonna see better handling of hot partitions than either Cassandra or DynamoDB. SiliDB implements self-optimizing features, ensuring that the database understands the hardware it's running on and gets the maximum utility out of the processors, the memory, and the disk available to it. As I said, many of our features are implemented in a way that's cleaner and more efficient, change data capture, materialized views, and because we're written in highly efficient C++, you won't, you won't get the garbage collection and the stop the world pauses of Java implementations. We obviously uh, can port your workloads to Google Cloud or even on-premises, avoiding lock-in and supporting your large customers' requirements for multi-cloud or even hybrid cloud operations. And best of all, we do not use a per-operation charge, meaning our customers do not face the same growth tax on their business. This results in lower TCO and better ROI, often by many factors over our competition. Our sweet spot is for applications that require single digit millisecond P99 latencies, millions of operations per second, and terabytes of data or larger. Other people use this because true multi-data center replication is built in from the start. It's not bolted on as an afterthought. So if you have a global deployment or plans to scale across multiple regions, SiliDB is often a great place to start. Now, you don't need to start in that range or in deployments spanning the world. Many of our users start small and think big. They have the anticipation that they will scale over time. Many other databases hit a wall at scale, either in performance or in the cost of ownership. And a lot of our users have migrated to SiliDB from other NoSQL and even SQL databases. We believe that we can save you the pain and cost of migration by starting your business on a database built for scale in the first place. Here's just a list of some of the many game changers who are building and scaling their businesses on SiliDB. As you can see, it's not just one industry. Anyone looking to run a big, fast, always-on distributed database can use us. You can start small and keep scaling. There's no barriers to hit as your company or your use cases grow. And here's a few of the game changers who are already deployed on Google Cloud. Notice the range of use cases from travel booking giant Kiwi.com to Zeotap's next generation customer data platform, to partnership automation and influencer marketing platform, impact.com, or to the social media phenomenon of ShareChat, or the workplace uh, and workforce management of ActiveOps, or to the blockchain gamification of SkyMavis. Like I said, anyone looking for a big, fast database can use this, and they can get started today on Google Cloud. The easiest way to get started is with SillyDB Cloud. As a database as a service, your provisioning is automated. You don't have to worry about upgrades, monitoring, backups, all the other administrivia is taken off your plate. We have an Apache Spark-based migrator tool to shift your workloads from Cassandra um, or DynamoDB to SillyDB. And we have professional services to help you shape your data from other databases because uh, uh, we have migrations from other NoSQL and even SQL databases. We also offer a self-managed SillaDB enterprise solution. Here, we still try to make things as easy as possible by providing a monitoring stack based upon Prometheus and Grafana, as well as an automated repair and backup tool, Scylla, monitoring, uh, Scylla Manager, I should say, as well as an operator for Kubernetes. And yes, it works perfectly with GKE. With that, let's get down further into SillaDB's architecture so you can understand how we achieve these benefits. Take it away, Ruth. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Peter. Um, so uh, what are the benefits of SillaDB? Um, as Peter mentioned, so SillaDB is this distributed database. So um, I have these four points for you. Uh, so first of all, uh, what does that mean, distributed database? It means that your data will be stored in multiple machines. But the question is, how many machines do you really need? We have customers and game changers that reduce their, uh, their node count by a factor of five simply by switching to SillaDB and vertically scale up. SillaDB is really a greedy database. It knows how to utilize the full capacity of your machine. For better performance and efficiency, we often ask our developers to use fewer and larger nodes. Second, predictable and low latencies. And why is that important? 
Because predictable latency translates into consistent user experience. And lower latency means that you provide your users with the same level of service, but with the lower cost of infrastructure for you. Third, less complexity. So installing and maintaining ScyllaDB is simple. Uh, ScyllaDB actually auto-tunes itself to the hardware you're using, saving you time uh, uh, and error-prone procedures to find the right settings. Uh, and lastly, uh, compatibility. Um, if you want to migrate from uh, Cassandra and DynamoDB, as Peter was saying, um, you don't have to touch your code at all. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, compatibility. And uh, since ScyllaDB is API compatible with Cassandra, you will automatically get all of the Cassandra ecosystem for free. In addition, there are many drivers available in a variety of programming languages. So you can see here Java, C Sharp, Python, and Go. But ScyllaDB has also created its own drivers that are optimized to take advantage of ScyllaDB specific features that we're going to talk about uh, later. So we have the Java driver, the Go, Python, and even Rust. Uh, why is ScyllaDB API compatible with DynamoDB? Well, both databases share the same uh, architecture and uh, the same design that originated from the Google Big Table paper in 2006. But for so for those of you who are considering moving from AWS to GCP and are already using DynamoDB, you also should consider uh, moving to ScyllaDB as well. Well, in fact, the architecture isn't the only reason to use ScyllaDB over DynamoDB. We did a benchmark that I highly encourage you to have a look at on our website. Um, and our findings is that uh, ScyllaDB Cloud is five times cheaper. And of course, um, as Peter was saying, uh, no cloud vendor lock-in, no limited uh, object size, and no uh, throttle requests. Uh, we also used the uh, YCSB uh, benchmark, which is the Yahoo Cloud Serving benchmark, uh, to measure both latencies and overall cost. And we found out that, uh, again, um, we are five times cheaper, but also one third, we, we have one third of DynamoDB's latencies uh, uh, consistently. Um, so uh, do, do you guys actually use DynamoDB? I, we think it's a great database. Uh, it's plain key value store. It has some challenges around multi-data center, but I think AWS is working on that. Um, but if you are having applications that have about 2,000 operations per second, then DynamoDB is great for you. But if you start uh, scaling up, then it, it gets very expensive very quickly. Um, so why is the ScyllaDB faster and cheaper? Um, let's see how ScyllaDB is under the hood. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how ScyllaDB is designed. So we said that ScyllaDB borrowed this design from Cassandra with the difference that it was implemented in C++ and uses a framework named CSTAR. Um, why would you use C++ over Java to write code? Well, C++ provides a faster and more efficient use of modern hardware. Using C++ gives the ability to put ScyllaDB in the user's workspace memory and control peripheral resources just at disk, network, and CPU in a way that is not limited by anything. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the short per core uh, architecture. So instead of clogging the whole system with threads um, illustrated in the image on the left, uh, the short per core architecture allows to parallelize operations for faster performance. This means that each of our shards is responsible for a certain amount of data, and each shard gets its fair share of the system's resources. This is how ScyllaDB achieves high throughput, and we are only limited by your CPU and disk to process the data and, de and deliver it to your users. Um, so let's talk a, li a little bit about deployment options. Um, the rule of thumb calls for deployment near your application servers or vice versa. Uh, application servers typically are installed near your users. So with ScyllaDB, you have the ability to deploy the database servers uh, near your application. Uh, you can deploy Scylla open source and enterprise on premise or, or with your favorite cloud provider. Um, ScyllaDB also pro uh, provides a fully managed database as a service on AWS and GCP through Scylla Cloud. So how to get started with ScyllaDB? Uh, if, you want to, uh, if you want to try out ScyllaDB on your local machine, you'll need to install Docker and run the following command. So docker run uh, ScyllaDB slash Scylla. The ScyllaDB image provides all the tools you need to connect and perform operations on your, uh, on your database. So if you don't want to use your machine, you can create a free account on, uh, on cloud.scyllaDB.com and create a cluster, for instance, of three nodes hosted on GCP and enable VPC peering for secure network, and we'll take care of deployment for you.
once you create a cluster, you can create your schema. And for that, we use the CQL, which is the Cassandra query language uh, that looks a lot like SQL if you're familiar with it. So first, you, you'll need to create a key space and define your replication factor. What is a key space? It's just a place where your data is going to be stored. And what, what is the replication factor does for you is to tell the database how often you want to replicate the data throughout your cluster to ensure high availability. Then you create a table, insert and select the values just like you would almost just like you would do it in SQL databases. So it's very intuitive for most developers. You can also enable CDC, which is short for change data capture to capture changes in your table. So what does CDC do for you? Um, you will have a record of all the writes and deletes in the table, uh, in the tables of your choosing. So here's an example of how you actually enable a CDC. You do it when you create your database schema um, and you can use it for transaction analysis to detect fraudulent transactions, for instance, or it can be used for data duplication if you wanna mirror your database. Um, there, these are just uh, two use cases, but I'm sure there are many others out there. We saw earlier um, that you can use any of the drivers to connect uh, and send queries to, to, the data, to the database. There's an example using Python where we define a query that is a, a CQL statement uh, and then process the statement. Here, we deliberately are using a simple statement uh, but we also have the option of using prepared statements that allows us to actually cache the query in the database and get and, and have performance gain. Speaking of optimizing the code, uh, Scylla DB comes with a powerful monitoring system. So the Scylla monitoring uh, uses uh, Prometheus and Grafana Docker components uh, to easily uh, deploy. Um, but if you're using uh, Scylla Cloud, so the monitoring system comes out of the box and you can use it to um, identify the queries that are, um, uh, that are consuming the most resources and uh, have hints on how you can optimize uh, those queries. Uh, so it helps your code to be more efficient and seeing the impact of the queries on latency. And uh, with that, th thank you very much. And back to you, Peter. All right, thanks. Yeah, and you know the other thing that's great about um, our uh, monitoring stack is, and with Scylla um, DB Cloud is that you can export your metrics uh, in Prometheus format for consumption in other applications such as Datadog. So we try and provide the greatest flexibility for people to uh, use and manage Scylla DB um, as possible. Uh, so with that, I wanted to thank you and I also wanted to let you know how we can continue the conversation because this is just the beginning. First of all, you can come to our website, SillaDB.com. You'll see that we post blogs uh, very frequently on all sorts of wonderful technical topics if you'd like to dive deeper. Uh, and you'll see my name on a couple of those blogs. You can also follow us on Twitter, at SillaDB. Uh, and you can also send us email. If you have any questions or queries, uh, info at SillaDB.com. Or if you'd like, there are over 5,000 people who have now joined our user Slack. So uh, definitely uh, get yourself a good Slack account and you can continue the conversation uh, with our own users and with uh, the peers in our engineering organization. Also, if you wanna try out uh, SillaDB for yourself, you can find the GitHub uh, uh, right here, the link at SillaDB dot, uh, slash Scylla. And finally, if people want to uh, do some more exploring, want to teach themselves how to uh, use uh, the applications that we've been talking about, um, university.sillydoo.com is 100% free. And we look forward to working with SADA and with our Google Cloud partners uh, in deepening the conversation and making your customers game changers. Thank you.